Hey everyone. Hello, hello, hello. It's a nice spring day in Boise. It's getting warmer out. Um, that's the good news. The, the hard news, and for those that have been following along my live tweeting at twitter.com slash hidden true crime, know that it was a tough morning in court though. So I'll go over it all with you, the latest, and then again, uh, right after court concludes today, we'll, uh, we will start streaming the audio with a live chat as soon as it comes down from the court. Um, hey everyone. So I think the biggest news, let's start with the biggest, um, most important news. They, they stated, the medical examiner today stated the uh, exact or the determined causes of death for both JJ and Tylee. JJ was uh, is, uh, asphyxiation by plastic bag over his head. Um, that was his cause of death, a, a manner, a homicide. The bag they explained today, the, it was a white plastic bag with red drawstring, similar to a bag found, um, you know, a kitchen garbage bag. It was not only placed around um, over his head, but it was tied tightly and um, also with duct tape. And it was tied tightly. Oh, and excuse me, the cause was asphyxiation by plastic bag and duct tape over his mouth. So both of those things. And so then, yes, there was duct tape jawline to jawline over his mouth. And then he had uh, scratches on his neck, which Dr. Warren, that was the medical examiner that did the autopsy of both Tylee and JJ, he stated that um, he determined that it was likely from JJ, the scratches could be from JJ trying to take the bag off of his head. And that uh, he also had bruises, symmetrical bruising on his arms, his upper arms. Um, which, you know, he believed was caused, you know, of course, uh, most bruising is uh, prior to one's death because blood stops flowing after death, but that it was before death, the bruises, and that it was part of that struggle, probably likely, this is me now, you know, someone holding him down. Um, so, just take that in. Um, we're having an extra long lunch today. By extra long, I mean 10 extra minutes just to let the jurors regroup. And then Tylee's cause of death is, uh, the cause of death was determined to be homicide by unknown, ooh, I don't know if it was means. I have the exact term written down in my tweets. Forgive me for not remembering it precisely, but it was essentially homicide by undetermined, uh, like unknown, unknown reasons or unknown how. They did not find, um, he said that the autopsy for Tylee took several days. It was very different than JJ's, of course. Uh, JJ's took four hours. Tylee's took several days. They did multiple x-rays on Tylee's remains. It came in, said it came in two body bags, her remains, as well as a sealed paper bag. And within the sealed paper bag were five more paper bags. So in other words, Tylee's autopsy came to the medical examiner's office in several bags. And uh, one thing he noted about Tylee's autopsy was that it was, uh, they did a lot of, so they did a lot of x-rays on Tylee's autopsy, or excuse me, Tylee's remains, forgive me as I'm trying to process this. And they did look for foreign objects, as in a bullet or any pieces of a weapon or anything that could maybe help determine the cause of death. More specifically, they never found any of that. The foreign, the foreign matter, manner, matter that was in her autopsy consisted of mostly dirt, mud. Um, they explained the organs they were able to find of hers, um, although most were charred. The, the different bones they found. And uh, I'll let you guys listen to that later today. I won't go over that in detail or um, you can go to my live tweeting. I shared it all there. 
Uh, toxicology uh, tests and results were done on both JJ and Tylee. JJ uh, came back for for something. Oh, and I'm. Does anybody? Can anyone tell me again what it what it? Go ahead. No one can see. Um. So. Uh, thanks, everyone. So, if anybody can go to my tweets or if you can remember what I said, it was H. T. So things were found in JJ, a low level of alcohol. I don't know what that means necessarily or what what that would imply um and then a uh yeah thank you the tweet uh for homicide by unspecified means is tylee and then ghb thank you everyone ghb so i put the wikipedia for ghb ghb um interestingly enough that was found in jj's system it can be as well as caffeine was found in his system and then um GHB is multiple things. It can be medically used for like narcolepsy. It can then, it, it, it's also a depressant and a sedative and it could be used um, on the streets, like uh, a street drug. And he referred it to as a date rape drug or a um, like ecstasy type drug, which I don't, look, I'm not the most savvy with drugs, but I didn't know those two were even similar. It doesn't seem like they are. And then, he also said that it can be uh, naturally occurring though, and that the levels in JJ's toxicology um, results, didn't he could not specify if this was naturally occurring in the body or that it was given to him. So there you go. Um, in Tylee's toxicology test, they used, they found, he said, the best muscular tissue that they could find for the toxicology test. And uh, ibuprofen came back, as well as um, high levels of like carbon monoxide, um, which would be from like being the, ch the burning of her bodies. And so he did confirm though, that the, whatever the levels in Tylee's toxicology results showed, if there's, you know, I think this is something people have been wondering, but we've been wondering more silently. Tylee was not burned alive. He said that it seemed as if things happened after she died. So, um, so that's, that's the latest. Um, hey, Dr. Von Decay, thank you so much for your, um, your comments you're making in chat right now, everyone check out what she is saying. She has some information there. Yeah, low levels of carbon monoxide on on Tylee. So beyond that, uh, Kay Woodcock, Larry Woodcock, they were not here this morning. They were warned, they were told to stay away this morning. Well, they weren't told to stay away, excuse me. They chose to stay away. They were told what was gonna happen and they made that choice. Crusher was not here, um, Lori, Vallow Daybell's Uncle Rex was here with his daughters. They were crying, I noticed. The daughters were crying um, after uh, we all separated for lunch. And as I, you know, we waited for the elevator, I saw that. Uh, jurors were crying today. I'll get back to that in a little bit. And um, who else did I see today? Um, oh, Lori, Lori Vallow Daybell was also crying during the discussions of her children. Um, I don't know what that means, but she was crying. Her face was red. Uh, she was dabbing her eyes. Her face was red. She looked distraught. I don't know what that means, but there you go. Um, so they were gonna show autopsy photos today and they, they did show autopsy photos, but there was a long uh, objection and sidebar and break right after mid-morning break uh, as we were about to start the autopsy photos, suggesting that um, the court showed them in black and white or maybe don't show, don't show the complete photos because they were so graphic. That was the word that was being used. And in the end, the judge concluded that um, the jury and uh, those in the court needed to see the full photos, the full evidence, but that they were not going to show the gallery or the public or reporters the photos 
on the um, overhead, the large screen, which um, I think is wise, you know? I think it's JJ's autopsy um, doesn't need to be shown to the world. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone for your support. Um, so after that was said, you know, uh, so Gigi with Pretty Lights and Alibis and, and myself, we're actually sitting closest to the jury. Um, I love that seat. She realized it's a great seat too. We sit there together and uh, we were closest to the jury. And then right before they started showing uh, photos to the jury, Gigi and I were, um, they, they have monitors, you know, and we're really close to the jury. So I did look, I'm like, can we see these monitors? We couldn't. It was like a privacy screen. They were black. You could not see the monitors. But understandably, I think people noticed how close we were and the people behind us were, not just us, like just this little section of people were to the jurors' monitors and, and then the state, uh, their monitor was facing another part of the gallery. So uh, the defense stopped it again and said, we need to make sure we cover up these uh, monitors. And uh, as they came over to kind of turn the jurors' monitors, one of the jurors did like point over to our section like we were, oops. Okay, my phone went off for a bit. My screen locked uh we kind of pointed to our section like we're trying to look and uh we simply couldn't see i understand the court's concern i'm not blaming anyone just sharing the story um and then everyone turned their monitors and but then a bailiff like stood in front of our section the entire time so while i was trying to see the jurors expressions or understand what they might be feeling and kind of report back um they uh they uh, you know the the bailiff stood in front of me and kind of you know every time i looked over the juror i think there was a like there was a concern or a threat that i was trying to see something i shouldn't which none of us could see anything and i didn't i didn't want to see it i saw enough on the second day of trial um all, all photos i'll never forget i didn't want to see anymore um what else happened today uh i mean that that's the biggest, still a bit overwhelmed. Um, FBI Special Agent Daniels concluded his testimony of the search of JJ and Tylee's remains. And and then Dr. Warren, we've heard from Dr. Warren. I suspect that Dr. Warren is gonna con going to conclude soon. I've heard from both, uh, both Court TV and Nate Eaton are saying that Garth Daybell is in town as and that Sheila and Jack Daybell might also be testifying later this week. I don't know who's going to testify after lunch, but interestingly enough, I, there are a bunch of uh, reporters out here right now. And every time a man in a suit walks by, they jump up and start recording him and saying, um, oh, we're looking for someone that looks like you. So I don't know what that means or who's coming next. Everyone seems to know but me. <laughs> um, People have been, you know, um, so kind. Um, I really feel like the courtroom is full of people just supporting each other here and understanding that this is hard, but wanting to be here for the kids. Um, there's a, uh, the court is really solemn. We had a long morning break. And then again, the judge gave us all a longer lunch break. And he said it so the jurors could regroup after um, seeing some really difficult graphic images. I did see jurors crying. I saw a female juror crying. I saw a male juror that looked emotional. And again, there were a lot of jurors I couldn't see because the bailiff was blocking our section's view of the jurors to protect the monitors. And so I did sort of ask um, other people. I asked Alex with uh, News Nation after what he saw. And he said, uh, he, he told me a, a couple of particular jurors that he saw crying that I couldn't see. So it was it was absolutely difficult time for the court, specifically for the jurors who had to see these images. That's the latest. I'm gonna look at chat now a little bit and see what questions people might have or what you're saying. Thank you so much, Jenny. Everyone, thank you for your support. It's so appreciated. Yeah, thank you guys for the, the kind things you're saying about JJ and Tylee. Oh yeah, so, you know, I've reported. I always just try to report. Let me tell you though, how I'm feeling. And this is why I'm grateful for this format. You know, as a reporter, 
uh, you don't get to tell uh, anyone how you're feeling. You usually stick to what you're seeing, what you're viewing, and you're the messenger. Um, I will say um, I'm grateful for this format where I get to be a little bit more personal now that we have our own podcast and YouTube channel and I can add that bit. So um, I was feeling angry and sad and I and heartbroken and um, you know I just as someone pointed out you know there you know I think we all hoped that JJ had at least a somewhat peaceful death you know that maybe he was drugged that maybe um, there was like a you know an overdose or uh, you know it's very clear his last moments were not okay, which is, I think we've been learning slowly throughout this whole thing. And so I'm just so angry. And then I looked at Lori Daybell, who was crying and I just didn't understand it, especially the contrast with the, with the call with Summer that we heard yesterday where Lori was so defiant and stoic and non-emotional as Summer screamed at her and cried to see her now crying in a courtroom, discussing these remains, is just hard for me to understand what in the hell she's thinking, you know, and how, you know, why now, what is this? Of course, I'll be asking John. Many people asked us to go live last night. John and I were going to try to. He was very tired, I was very tired. Um, we'll be talking about this full week soon, everything. Um, it's just sad, everyone's, Everyone's feeling it. It's just sad. I was sad. I was angry. Uh, I almost tweeted. I almost tweeted during lunch, or not during lunch, mid-morning recess, that I was going to go punch a wall, and I thought better because tweets are public, and you never know what the court is going to consider a real threat or not, so I did it. And so I'm going to say right here, I'm just joking. I would never do that. It's what I felt. Um, but I was very angry, too. Um, I see Kay and Larry walking in, so it looks like they're going to be here for the rest of, of trial. Let me see if I can turn this around and show you guys. Hold on. Um, yeah, let's see. Okay, there's my bag. Here I am in the reflection. So anyway, I'm gonna go head back in. Oh, hold on, I'll show you more. Here's Nate. Hey, Nate. <laughs> okay. I uh, will report more later. We'll see you guys. Um, stay strong. Thank you for all the tweets you're sending for all the extra info. I, I tweet as a messenger. And I'm trying to do it as fast as I can. So I really appreciate all of you on the live tweets adding more context, sharing more information. It's great. Thank you so much. Um, and uh, go back in there and put my game face on and get to work and keep relaying everything that's going on for you guys. And then again, join with us um, for our stream and live chat after. We'll see you guys. Bye.